Good morning, it is Wednesday, April 6, 2022, and I'm Pastor Mark Dillon of West Valley Grace Fellowship. I pray the message this morning will be used to strengthen you in your faith and encourage you in your walk with our Savior and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been pointing out the differences in recent messages between the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. And uh, just last week, uh, we were pointing out the horrific time that was going to come after the apostles and Pentecost and this gospel of the kingdom was getting preached. If Israel would have embraced that message, the next thing on the prophecy timetable would have been the time of Jacob's trouble. The 70th week of Daniel's vision, a period of seven years, three and a half, which would be somewhat peaceful, and then three and a half when the Antichrist is going to brutally destroy his enemies, and then the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of a three and a half year period is going to return to the earth and judge the world and judge Israel and establish his thousand year reign here on earth. And so when the apostles asked the Lord Jesus Christ, teach us to pray. I don't think they had any concept of when the Lord gave him what's called the Lord's Prayer of what the various thoughts were in that prayer. And the Lord's Prayer is probably the most commonly repeated prayer of all time. And yet, many people today have no understanding or insight into what they're actually praying about. And I find that rather sad because today, as members of the church, the body of Christ, we have complete and free access to God at any time and any place to bring all of our cares and supplications to him. And so rather than just reiterating a rote prayer, we can communicate with our God and our Lord and our Savior in personal, intimate terms. And so when they ask the Lord, teach us how to pray, he gave them a pattern, not a prayer to memorize and just pop it back, but a prayer in response to their request that would be very pertinent during this time right here. And last week, we talked about some of the characteristics or things that were going to happen during this time, and that was just a very simple summary if you want to look at it in much more depth, you can find that in Revelation, in the book of Revelations. But here, let's look at what the Lord Jesus Christ talked about and examine carefully this prayer. Matthew 6, 9 is where this prayer is found in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, beginning with verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, talking about when they're going to go through this horrific time. He says this, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This aspect of the prayer can be prayed by anybody from the beginning of time until today because that has a universal application. But the ne very next verse starts to identify the context of this prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. What they are asking here is that they want this to be done so that his kingdom can come when he returns, that he can set up his kingdom here on earth. If you remember in the early part of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1 and verse 6, they asked that very question. Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? 
That's what all of this is all about. This has nothing whatsoever to do with the church, the body of Christ, and the gospel of the grace of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so that is what they were going to, and that is what these people one day yet future will agonize for, that coming kingdom. And so going on, give us this day our daily bread. They will need this provision of God to provide their needs. Because as we read last week, they will not be able to buy or sell during this time unless they have the mark or the sign of the beast or the name of the beast. They must take that mark in some fashion, maybe on their foreheads or their hands, I'm not sure, but they must take that sign. And yet, anyone who does take that sign will be condemned. And so, those elect Israelites must not take that sign, and now they can't buy food. And so, God, I believe, will miraculously and divinely provide all their needs their sustenance to survive during this last three and a half years particularly. And I believe he will hide them from the Antichrist. And so that's why they're praying here, give us this day our daily bread. It'll be much like when he provided the manna and the quail in the desert. He will miraculously and divinely provide for his chosen. And then it goes on to say, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Right up to the end, they are required to forgive those that are even persecuting them, that are despitefully using them. Forgiveness is an indispensable requirement. And the Lord indicates this by adding it after he completes the prayer. When he says, Amen, the next verse, he says this. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We've already spoken in one of the previous messages in relationship to this about how the gospel of the grace of God, all of our sins, if you have trusted Jesus Christ, believing he died for you, he bore your sins in his body on that cross and he suffered your death in your place. If you trust him, God has forgiven you already all of your trespasses. There is no place in the gospel of the grace of God for a believer to ask for forgiveness. For we are completely and totally forgiven of all of our trespasses. And then the final statement in this prayer is, and forgive us our debts. No, I'm sorry. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The phrase, but deliver us from evil, should say, but deliver us from the evil one. Because it is during this time that they are being persecuted by the Antichrist and all of his followers. If they could find them, they would kill them. And so they're praying to God to deliver us from this evil one. In Mark 13, 20, it says that if th this time was so horrific that it says this, Mark 13, 20, And except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But, 
for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Now, I don't know exactly how much time it will be shortened or anything like that, but it does clearly indicate that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to protect his elected ones, his chosen ones, from the Antichrist and his followers so that they can survive this time of judgment and go in to the thousand-year reign of Christ here on earth. And then some other prayer or some other one other version has this for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever this pattern of prayer is concluded with a recognition and praise of the sovereignty of God in all things and this again is something that all the redeemed from the beginning of time could pray but in between the opening and the closing the rest of the prayer and petitions are all in relationship to this time of great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, when two-thirds of Israel will be wiped out. Today, in the dispensation of the grace of God and in the gospel of the grace of God, Paul has given members of the body of Christ instructions regarding our personal prayers. Let's look at Philippians 4 in verse 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing or be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Again, now in Ephesians 6 and verse 18, Paul says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, not through some remote prayer, not through some rote memorization, but in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. So we don't pray about this future coming tribulation period. That's not a concern of ours. I am totally convinced in my faith and through the revelation of the gospel of the grace of God, that the church, the body of Christ, will be raptured pre-tribulation, prior to this time of Jacob's trouble. And God has told us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation or deliverance by our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I have no worries about, will I take the mark of the beast? I won't be here for it. Will I have to suffer all this horrific judgment? Not at all. The Lord Jesus Christ bore all my judgment, all my punishment on the cross for my sins. And so I can rejoice looking forward to the day when I'll be with Christ forever. Let's look at Romans 8.26. Romans 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. In other words, today as members of the church, the body of Christ, we cannot be positive about what we should pray or how we should pray. Oftentimes people pray for somebody to be healed and it doesn't happen. Or we pray for getting a job or whatever it might be and it doesn't happen. Apparently that prayer was not what we ought to have been praying for. And so we don't really know all the time how to pray. But the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. When the Spirit takes our prayers from our heart, our sincere petitions and supplications to God, the Spirit works that prayer to the way that it will satisfy the will of God. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. And so as members of the church, the body of Christ, we have this confidence that God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, that he put his spirit in us when we believed the gospel, that that spirit is working in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. And as a result, we will live our lives for his glory. And that's the marvelous message of the gospel of the grace of God. That we have no fear of condemnation or judgment. The Lord Jesus Christ bore all of that for us. And that's why we praise and glorify God for his amazing grace. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you now, acknowledging your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, as our Lord. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that every person that hears these words will search the scriptures to prove and examine these things for their own faith. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.